I was actually shocked to learn about these forever chemicals. I did a deep dive in this topic and I wanna give you a summary of it. Another name for these are PFAS chemicals. And the reason they call them forever chemicals is they stay in the environment for thousands of years. They basically slowly poison us. 97% of Americans were tested positive for these PFAS chemicals. They're in our fat cells. They've been found also in breast milk and especially drinking water. These chemicals are definitely linked to cancer, hormone problems, especially the thyroid, liver damage, reproductive damage. However, despite how depressing this topic is, I have a really good solution. These PFAS chemicals are all over the place. You're exposed to these chemicals using Teflon cookware, food packaging. Firefighters are exposed to it from the foam that they spray. It's in a lot of canning goods, unfortunately. It's all over the place. These chemicals were first introduced into our environment in the early 50s or even late 40s. And of course, you would think there'd be some safety testing going on to allow these chemicals in our environment by either the EPA or the FDA. But it's not until recently that some of these governmental agencies are, are doing anything about it. But my first question was, why were some of these chemicals considered generally recognized as safe? Well, now I know that that's a loophole that a lot of manufacturer companies use to push their chemicals into the environment by doing their own safety studies and then considering it safe. I mean, even the testing methods that the FDA use right now, it's like they only identify it for six compounds, yet there's over 600 different compounds. Of course, the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency, only tests for a fraction of the chemicals compared to all of the chemicals that are out there. I mean, it wasn't even until the 2020 that the FDA began to phase out voluntary agreement with manufacturing companies to stop using these PFAS chemicals in food packaging, but they have yet to enforce these bans. But of course, they're gonna go after the farmers with their raw milk. Apparently that's more dangerous than these forever chemicals. So the two strategies that I'm gonna recommend is to limit the exposure to these chemicals. And so the greatest exposure right now is from your water supply. So I wanna talk a little bit about that. And the second strategy, which I think is a really good strategy would be to build up your own body's tolerance for these chemicals. But first let's just talk about this water thing. There's been some great research by the Environmental Working Group EWG on forever chemicals. And what they did is they evaluated 25 PFAS chemicals to see at what percentage these water filters were getting rid of these PFAS forever chemicals. And they tested quite a few, but there's only three filters that actually work by removing 100% of these chemicals. And those are the three that I'm going to recommend. So the first one is called the Travel Berkey Gravity. This one cost around $327, so it's a bit expensive. The next one is called Clearly Filtered. This is the second most expensive, which is $90. And the third one is called Zero Water at roughly about $19. Now, before you invest in anything, let's just take a look at this for a second because I want you to know how long these water filters last. Let's take a look at the Zero Water filter for 19 bucks. The filters only last for 20 gallons. You'd have to buy like 37 filters for the whole year. So it's gonna cost you $646 for the entire year. Now let's talk about the next one clearly filtered, okay, it's $90. Those filters last for 100 gallons. You're looking at buying about seven filters for the year at a cost of $436. A little bit cheaper than the zero water filter. Now let's look at the most expensive filter, the Travel Berkey Gravity Filter, which initially cost like $327. Well, guess how many gallons it filters? 6,000. It's gonna last more than eight years. If you do the math, you're only gonna spend like $40 per year. Most of these chemicals come through your water supply. It might be a good idea to invest in something to minimize your exposure because they bioaccumulate. These chemicals build up in the body, but they don't come out very easily. There's still ways to eliminate some of these toxins from the body. And that's what I want to talk about right now is sweating or going into a sauna you will be able to get rid of some of these chemicals through the sweating. Another interesting way to get rid of the chemicals is through a process called autophagy. Now, autophagy is a condition that you put your body into when you do intermittent fasting and prolonged fasting, where the bodies recycle old damaged things, as well as get rid of pathogens. It can also help get rid of chemicals and also strengthen your body because there's a lot of positive, great things that fasting will do to your cells. Another thing is infrared helps to detoxify your body as well. So you can get a lot of infrared being exposed to the sun in the morning, 
and then before the sun sets. There's infrared saunas, there's infrared devices you can use, but infrared is one way to detoxify some of these chemicals. Also, spirulina and chlorella. They're like this algae that has properties to detoxify chemicals. And now let's talk about strengthening your body, your biochemistry. You naturally have all these amazing things in your body that help you get rid of poisons. They're called detoxification enzymes. And so strengthening your body's ability to detoxify is going to be very, very important. And so anything that has sulfur in it is going to help you. And that would be like eggs, for example, garlic, and especially onion. But these sulfur-based compounds will greatly help you detoxify. And you also have the cruciferous vegetables, cabbage, broccoli, Brussels sprouts. Not only are high in sulfur, but they have many other antioxidants that can help the detoxification process. And of course, the amino acid that's going to be really important in strengthening your glutathione is glutamine. Well, take a while to guess what has the most glutamine. Red meat, the thing that they tell you to start avoiding. Glycine is also important, and you can get that in collagen, which happens to be also in red meat. If you're consuming nose to tail, you're eating bone broth or beef collagen. So one of the meals that I normally eat a lot of, which happens to be a really good detox meal, would be I have some steak or some burger patty. And the cruciferous that I like the most is cabbage. And to take it one step further, we could ferment the cabbage. Why would we want to do that? Because probiotics also help eliminate these forever chemicals. But only if that sauerkraut is raw, because when you pasteurize it, you kill all the microbes. Now, if we have the difference between green cabbage and red cabbage, do the red cabbage, because then we have some added antioxidants. We can start to avoid the exposure to these chemicals, but it's really, really hard to be in an environment that's toxic freight. Why not beef up these biochemical pathways? And there's some really key nutrients to do that. And I'm going to list them right now. Selenium, iodine, copper. The trace minerals are really, really important. Where do these trace minerals come from? You can get them from seafood, shellfish, and you guessed it, grass-fed red meat. Because these forever chemicals do affect the thyroid, you really want to make sure you have enough iodine and selenium. Selenium you can get from Brazil nuts, and you can also get it from shellfish and oysters. I just gave you a series of things you should start right now, but I wanted to put this on your radar just because, unfortunately you're being slowly poisoned. Now you know what to do about it. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.